All right. Good morning, everybody. Oh, I don't want to be stuck behind that truck. Maybe I'll pass it. Our friend Eric Smith gave us a little bit of criticism for a video I made recently. I've been making a lot of videos but not posting them here. Uh, said, you know, more Russians were killed in World War II than Jews were killed in the Holocaust. Get over it already. <coughs> That's what Eric said. Now, I remember saying to a college professor when I was a guest speaker, at VCU, I said, well, you know, the communists killed more than the Nazis, and, and Stalin was worse than Hitler. And the professor, who's not Jewish, said to me, he, said, he doesn't understand how I could say that. The communists were killing for ideological reasons, and Hitler was killing for racial reasons. So you could change your ideology to save your life, but you can't change your race. The thing is, is as we said, talking about Mr. Weinberger's passing, and I was at his home yesterday making a shiva call. I got to hold in my hands the tefillin that... thousands of Jews put on in Mauthausen. So it gave them the courage to survive because there was one Jew who had to fill in a woman called uh, Rabbi Weinberger told him, you know, he, she asked her father, how did you survive? He said, there was one Jew in Mauthausen who had to fill in and hundreds of us put on to fill in every day because this one Jew had to fill in and still a height, we were able to put on the tefillin. And, that, and that's what gave him the will to live, that he knew that for one second he could go over to, to this one Jew and put on tefillin. said, I'm alive today because your father had those tefillin in Matthaus. Not only her and her children, but so how many future generations? And not only, I'm sure it's, that's not the only story like that. There were hundreds, thousands of Jews who put on these tefillin that's what gave them the will to live and to survive. And the fact of the matter is, we all know that if, if they would have been caught putting on those tefillin, they would have been killed. And yet these people risk their lives to put on these tefillin. And uh, although it's true that Hitler saw Jews in a racial sense, it was the ideology of Judaism that he 
was seeking to wipe out. Some of the Kirov rabbis will say, you know, he knew something that a lot of the secular Jews didn't know. Because he said as long as even one Jewish child who never heard anything of their faith is around, Judaism will still be alive and will come back. Kind of like how King Josiah was hidden away. You know, they were trying to wipe out the Davidic line, but this one one remnant remained to keep that alive. was it that Hitler was looking to wipe out? I mean, people say, oh, he was a, you know, he was a Christian. Well, he wasn't a Christian. He invented his own form of Christianity. He called positive Christianity. What did he mean, positive Christianity? Meaning, in the terms of positive and negative what he understood to be negative is all the thou shalt not. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal. That's what he understood to be negative. In the sense that we talk of in Judaism mitzvot ase and mitzvot lot ase, positive commandments and negative commandments. The positive commandments are the thou shalt and the negative commandments are thou shalt not. And we have both. We have more thou shalt not than we have thou shalt. And most of the thou shalts that we have only apply in the, in the temple or in the Holy Land. And those are connected also to thou shalt not. So our faith is mostly one of thou shalt not. And a few thou shalts. that Hitler wanted was only thou shalt and no thou shalt not. And he called that positive Christianity. But then he said, really, he on any part of Christianity. He wanted to go back to worshiping the old Norse gods. I know some people like that. ideological war and the fact that he would get killed for wearing tefillin for wearing phylacteries more than for having an ancestor a few generations back who was Jewish but for actively practicing Judaism this was an ideological war and and my issue with the Holocaust remembrance is that so many people on the left forget that part of it. You know, they, they say, you know, never forget and never again. But they don't realize that they're doing Hitler's work when they go and don't keep the Sabbath, and don't put on tefillin, and, and, and 
don't, and, and they eat non-kosher food. They're doing his work. You know, uh, another story I heard was, you know, was a, a, a boy who was, uh, that I heard yesterday at the Shiva house, a boy was on drugs, heard this story about Mr. Weinberger putting on tefillin every day. In my house, and then he said, you know, if, if someone could put on, you know, someone could put on tefillin in the, in the concentration camp, Why can't I put on to fill in and, and to say it? issue is how are we going to keep these memories alive I don't I don't care so much about Steven Spielberg's you know push just to keep all right the memories alive of, of assimilated Jews in Germany you know the aristocrats who look down on us Ost, Oster you the elitists I care about who's going to be that for my children. The way that we could look at the Baba Rebbe and the Satma Rebbe and remember that which was. And we can look now at the Baba Rebbe and the Satma Rebbe with all due respect. And it's not quite the same. I'm not saying that we don't have beautiful Torah from them and and other sources of inspiration. They're very inspiring people to have a Baba Rebbe and a Satma Rebbe. We don't, we don't question that. But it's not the same. And I didn't even see the old Satma Rebbe or even the old Baba Rebbe I could have seen to dab in my shul if I would have just been there you know one one Shabbos I, I was, it was the last Shabbos I didn't keep and I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken that was probably the last Shabbos that the Bible Rebbe was at our shul and uh, I could have been there and instead I, I went and I was in a play regret that a long time ago and I still try to keep Shabbos a shtickle as much as I could I it was Shabbos but I could have seen the Baba forever I saw Ibn Naftali, and I saw Berach Moshe, obviously the old Sapper was before my time. And what did that mean to see these Jews? And, and alright, so now I love the Sapper Rebbe's, both are Byron and Rebbe's. Respect them. I, I, it's a treasure that we have them in our lives, and I love to see them. But it's not quite the same. You know, I still have 
my Rebbe, Kalva Rebbe, was a little boy. And, uh, during the war, he escaped the Nazis and he escaped the communists. And then he says, and then he came to America, and it was the American Jews who became our spiritual enemies. He said when he, he would walk in the street in Borough Park, people would would tell him that wearing his pay is down like there's a Chil Hashem. They told him, and, and people said, you know, 50 years time, there'll be no more Orthodox Jews. And thank God they were wrong. Thank God we have Banim of Nei Banim, Oiskim Batarim Mitzvahs. But do we have the Authenticity, but we have the struggles, you know. I mean, again, with all due respect to the Sinisha Rebbe's that we have today, who I love very much, you know, you had the old Rebbe's who were in the camps and went through hell. And you have the Rebbe's today who never stood, stepped foot in the Walmart, never stood, stepped foot in the shop, right? Don't know what it's what 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 life is all about. You know, I had I'm not gonna mention who it is. He told me not to tell anybody, but you know, I uh, I, I remember bringing a Hasidic Rebbe into Walmart. And he said he hadn't been in such a store like this in 30 years. You know, uh, they, we, we passed by, um, you know, the food, and they'd never seen ham before. And he said, "This is, this is davracher." <laughs> they couldn't believe that's what it looks like. You know, I mean, I, I, I get amazed. I go to uh, Shoprite, and they have alligator meat here, and that like spooks me out. You know. And I, and I love to go to the zoo and look at, at alligators and snakes and lizards and things, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird to see the alligator meat, but uh, you know, uh, <laughs> what does it what does it mean? All of this, you know. To, all this to learn Torah but we don't have you know this authenticity you know this will be missed from the old days that I remember you know and I'm not you know and, and I'll <coughs> you know there's, there's the Holocaust survivors who I remember in Richmond we love them very much but not the same, you know, to, you know, there's one need who would come to Shir and Yeshiva from Sigit, and he remembered uh, the, the Baruch Moshe's older brother from Zaman Leif, who was killed in the Holocaust, who was a rub in Sigit. survivors, you know, how is it the Messiah is not here yet, these people that went through hell, <coughs> and I was sure, as a kid, hearing the stories of Rabbi Weinberger, that, that he was going to be for those who, who saw Mashiach. And, 
that's what I'm talking about. The authenticity, the ideology, the sincerity. The way Rabbi Weinberger said yesterday, he said, you know, so much of us today, Judaism is a subject, like math, you know, going to going to shul is like, you know, going going to, uh, you have to go to, to an accountant to, to file your taxes, and you have to go to shul, it's another thing, you have to check off your list, and he said, that's not how his father lived, he said, by his father, Judaism was life, it's all there was, every, every movement, movement he did it was, was, was Jewish, it was more the Chayish Yehudi. How did I wind up going to Farakoe? I, I, I took a day off work and I went to Brooklyn and performed a funeral for someone local who I didn't know. <coughs> and, uh, and, and, the, and the people at the funeral said they, they just want me to say the prayers, no, no eulogies or anything. And so I said, the brother of Moses, in the book of Leviticus, lost his two beloved sons. It says, Yidah Maharo. Aaron was quiet. It said, you know, maybe we're saying more in our quietness than in our talking. And uh, I got to learn that. I got to learn to shut up a little bit. I talk too much. Well... Like, share, and subscribe, comment.